Welcome back to another buying advice video. Today we're going to take a look at 929ers up to $900. So I've done a couple videos like this already. I did eight hardtails under $800 and I also did six hardtails under $600. And I think subconsciously I mostly featured 27.5 bikes and that's probably because that's what I ride. It's what I'm most comfortable on. But there are a lot of good 29ers out there. Uh, so I wanted to do this video and go over, you know, nine of those. Um, if you're looking for hands-on testing, that, that's not what you're going to see here. It's really just going to be looking at some specs online. Uh, if you're new to biking, looking for your first bike, maybe some of this will help you figure out why one bike might be $900 and another one is half of that price. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first bike I want to take a look at is a beloved Dick Sporting Goods bike. It is the GT Avalanche 29 and it's kind of like the big brother to that GT Aggressor Pro. And although it does say $699 on the screen here, um, it actually does pretty regularly go down to $499. I've seen that a few times. So I would consider this a $500 bike. Um, some of the specs on it, you're going to get an SR Sun Tour XCT fork, and that's kind of just good enough for mountain biking. It's a coil spring fork, and it's kind of Sun Tour's entry into it. There's the XCT, the XCM, the XCR. Next, read XCR Air, and that's when things actually start getting pretty good. The drivetrain on this is a 3x8, and the rear derailleur is a Shimano Olivio, and that's a little bit better than entry level. You know, a lot of these bikes, especially the cheaper ones, are going to see a Altus, so the hierarchy goes Altus, Acera, Olivio, then you get into Dior, Dior Shadow, Dior Shadow Plus, where you start getting a clutch. So the Olivio is, is pretty decent, especially at this price point. There's no great image of a close-up on the brakes, but they are hydraulic disc brakes. They're Tektro brand, which is, you know, not the greatest, but they're actually what I have on my bike. And they're 160 millimeter, and really I've had no issues with them at all. Um, they are strong enough to bring you to a halt real quick, even throw you over the handlebars if you're not careful. Um, so definitely usable brakes. Nice to see that they put hydraulic and not mechanical brakes on this. The tires are transition 2.25 inch wide. Um, never heard of those before, and you know it looks like they don't have maybe the greatest, most aggressive tread pattern on it. But again, still probably usable for some XC riding, some light trail use, and stuff like that. And it's always something you can upgrade in the future as well. And in terms of overall geometry on this frame, one of the big things I look at, and you'll have noticed that in my previous videos too, is the head angle, um, 69.5 degree which is pretty, you know, pretty standard for an XC bike. You see a lot of them at 70 degrees. And actually with the 29ers in general, uh, they tend to be a little bit steeper than the 27.5. So 69 and a half is really not bad. Um, overall at 499, you know, when it is actually on sale for this bike, I would say it's actually a pretty decent value. So working our way up in price, the next bike is the Marin Bobcat Trail. And this is a 29er for most sizes, unless you're looking at an extra small or a small, where you're going to get a 27.5. Uh, but this comes in at $599, and we'll take a look at the specs. And some of them are kind of similar to the previous bike, and then there are some upgrades in there as well. Now, some of these pictures are actually going to be showing uh, the Bobcat Trail, the higher end models. So this is another 3x8 drivetrain, and the rear derailleur on this one is a Shimano Altus. So you're dropping down a couple notches in the hierarchy there. Um, so I would say this is kind of like the very minimum you would want on a mountain bike to still have it usable. This picture is showing the XCM, but this particular model comes with another Suntour XCT, coil spring fork, 100 milliliters of travel. So same as what we looked at previously. The brakes are also the same. Uh, those are the Tektro hydraulic brakes. And like I said, those are they're decent, they're definitely usable. In terms of tires, you're looking at some 2.3 inch wide V-Tire Crown Gem. So they are just a little bit wider and actually by a company that I've heard of, so you know that's probably a good thing. So the last thing I want to look at is the geometry on this. So you've got a 68 degree head angle, which to me that's getting towards the sweet spot, somewhere between 66 and 68 for like a modern trail style bike. 
Um, and then also think about the fact that you're you're getting a bike that you know Marin is sold in local bike shops. They also sell online, but you can get that convenience of going to a local shop, having them set it up for you. Next up is a Chain Reaction Cycles bike. This is the Vetus Nucleus 29 VR, and this bike also comes in at $5.99. And the highlight of this bike straight away is the fork. It is an SR Suntour XCR Air. Um, so it's the first bike we've seen that has an air fork on it. What that means is you can adjust the air pressure uh, to fit your weight and you can adjust the rebound dampening to suit how you want it to feel versus a coil spring fork which is just going to act kind of like a pogo stick and you know it's not adjustable it's just going to spring back how it does you can't change any of that stuff. And this is another set of those Tektro hydraulic disc brakes 160 millimeters again on the rotors and like I said they're sort of lower end but they work perfectly fine in my opinion it'd be nice if you had some Shimano or some SRAM hydraulic brakes but these are definitely usable so this is another bike with a Shimano Altus rear derailleur so pretty low end there uh, but one of the nice things is that this drivetrain is actually a 2x9 um, so that sounds like less if like I said if you're a beginner some of this stuff may not make sense 2x9 that sounds like you're getting less gears but what it really the advantage is you're getting simpler shifting you've only got two gears in the front um, and you've got a wider range in the back and it's going to make everything just work a lot smoother and in terms of the tires they've actually put a little bit of thought into these too so you've got WTB Vigilante 2.3 up front which is a little bit knobbier a little bit more aggressive you've got a 2.25 WTB Trail Boss in the rear um, which a lot of people seem to like the Trail Boss. I've tried personally uh, the comp version, so the cheapest non tubeless ready, and I really did not like the way they performed. They, they felt kind of squirrely. The compound wasn't very grippy. Um, as a rear tire, maybe not terrible. Another thing worth pointing out here is this bike actually does have a tapered head tube. Um, so what that means is, you know, it already does have a good fork, but if you ever wanted to upgrade forks, um, a lot of times these these newer higher end ones uh, they're going to come with a tapered steer on it so if you don't have a bike with a tapered head tube um, it's going to limit your options in terms of upgrades last thing to look at on this bike is the little bit of geometry specs and you can read up on this yourself obviously um, the first thing that I look at though is the head tube angle 67 degrees and you know like I said that's kind of in that sweet spot between 66 and 68 uh, so definitely good geometry on this bike. Next up is a bike that looks very similar and this is the Vetus Nucleus 29 VRS model and by jumping up to the VRS you're going to spend $699 so $100 more and you get a couple upgrades by doing that. The first difference is that you're going to get a 180 millimeter rotor on the front still with the Tektro hydraulic brakes though so a little bit more stopping power up front and your rear derailleur is upgraded to a Shimano Acera so that's one small step up from the previous bike and to be honest those are really the the only differences that I can find on this same tires, same fork, uh, same 2x9 setup so nothing too drastic I personally I don't even know if it's worth the extra hundred dollars but I did want to show this on the video as an option Next up is a Giant Talon 29-2 and this is $720 and one of the first advantages you're going to get on this bike is that this is something you can go to a local bike shop and purchase. Um, they'll set up everything, they'll make sure it's adjusted how it should be um, and a lot of times they'll give you free tune-ups and things like that so you know you do have some advantages by buying a bike like this from a local bike shop. In terms of the specs, we'll start with the fork. It's an SR Sun Tour XCM, so that is a coil spring fork. It's a downgrade over the, the previous two bikes that we looked at. Um, I do know from experience that it's heavy, uh, but it is usable. It's a little bit better than the XCT, sort of their bottom of the range coil spring fork. The drivetrain is actually an upgrade over what we have previously looked at. It's another 2x9, uh, but in the rear you're getting a Shimano Dior Shadow Plus and what that means uh, that plus indicates that it has a clutch in it and what that basically means is that there's a very strong spring keeping tension on the chain um, so that's going to prevent 
chain drop and it's just going to give you an overall better experience it's not going to be as noisy you know some of these cheaper rear derailers it sounds like something's broken in the back it moves around and makes so much noise so definitely getting a nice drivetrain on this the braking is taken care of by another set of Tektro hydraulic brakes you do get the 180 in the front so you're, you're going to get some more stopping power than some of those ones that are just 160 front and rear so another really cool thing that uh, Giant does with a lot of their bikes are the tires. So these are Maxxis Icon, so they're not very aggressive tread pattern, but they are the EXO casing, tubeless ready, and they are actually set up tubeless from the factory. Um, so that's going to prevent you from having a lot of pinch flats and little thorns giving you flats and things like that. They're already set up tubeless with the sealant in them, and you're good to go. And then the final thing to look at is the geometry on this. You know, obviously there's tons of specs like they always list. Head tube angle, 69 degrees, so we're kind of going back a little bit towards uh, the cross-country realm. But 69, I think, you know, it's still usable, especially with bikes like these with 29ers that have the bigger wheels that can just kind of roll over things easier anyway. Next up at the exact same price point of $720 is the Cannondale Trail 7. So this is a bike that you can order online or you can get these at... REIs, which I think are pretty much across the country at this point. In terms of specifications on it, there's another SR Suntour XCM fork, same as the Giant Talon we just looked at. 100 millimeter coil spring, heavy, definitely would like to have an air fork if you could. There's also a 2x9 drivetrain on this, although the rear derailleur is a Shimano Altus, so quite a few steps back in the hierarchy. The brakes are an upgrade, they're Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. Um, you know, obviously that Shimano brand name carries a lot of quality with it. And the tires are WTB Ranger Comp. Uh, this, this bike is actually uh, sizes up and down with the rider. So 27.5 for smalls and mediums, 29 for large and extra large, uh, 2.25 wide. I don't have any personal experience with these tires, but they seem to be pretty good. And the last thing in terms of geometry on this. 68.5 uh, degree head angle for the 29ers, uh, 68 if you're at the 27.5, so pretty decent trail style geometry on this. Alright, we're back to chain reaction cycles for this next bike. This is the Octane 1 Prone 29, and this bike has some actually some pretty good things going for it, especially at the $7.99 price point. As usual, we'll look at the fork first, and this is an RST Blaze, uh, so it's the first non-SR Suntour fork that we've seen. Um, although it is another coil spring fork, it does have a, a lockout feature on it, and 30 millimeter stanchions, so maybe a little bit more strength compared to some, most of those other ones that had 28 millimeter stanchions. Where things start to get good, though, is the drivetrain. So this is the first bike that's going to offer us a 1 by it's a 1 by 10 not a 1 by 11 but you're still going to get 11 to 42 range in the rear which is what you actually get on a lot of uh, entry level 1 by 11s anyway it's a Dior M6000 rear derailleur and the brakes on this are Shimano hydraulic brakes and it doesn't list it but it sure looks like the front rotor is larger so I'm gonna guess that that's 180 on the front 160 on the rear and the tires are WTB Trail Boss. Um, again, I'm not a huge fan of these, although they are 2.4 inch wide. So that will definitely aid in giving you some more grip. One of the things that I haven't really talked about much, but they're showing it here, very short stem on it. So that's going to give you a little bit more upright seating and get you back from that front wheel so you don't feel like you're going to flip over the bars so much. And then the last thing is the geometry on this. It's not listed at all what that head angle is or really any other geometry specs. Um, but just by looking at this visually, it looks like that uh, fork is at a pretty slack angle. If I had to guess, probably 67. So definitely a very good trail style bike here. So the next bike is a little bit of an oddball. This is the Felt Dispatch 960. This is actually the 2019 model. When I did my research on all these bikes, um, I was looking at some 2018 models, and the 2018 version of this, at least at the time I looked at it, was 849. Maybe it's something that the you know the price periodically comes down on these. 
I'm honestly not sure, but we'll still go through it anyway as if it were an 849 bike. Um, so in terms of tech specs on this thing, uh, this is the first bike that we're going to see that has a RockShox fork and it's the 30 silver solo air, 100 millimeters of travel, so that 30 refers to 30 millimeter stanchions. It is an air fork, so it's going to be adjustable, it's going to be lighter than the coil spring forks. Like the previous bike, this is a 1x10 drivetrain and it has the same Shimano Dior M6000 10 speed Shadow Plus rear derailleur, so it's got the clutch in it, definitely an advantage there. One minor difference in that drivetrain is actually the cassette. Uh, although it is 10 speeds, it's 11 to 40 in the rear instead of 42, so your easiest gear isn't going to be quite as easy. Uh, but still definitely a lot of range. Shimano hydraulic brakes on this as well, 180 millimeters front, 160 rear, and this bike comes with Maxxis Ardent tires, uh, and I actually have these on my bike currently. I'm quite a big fan of them. They're a nice soft compound, they grip pretty well. The only time that they don't grip great uh, is in you know really loose ground or sandy ground. Um, obviously they're not great in mud, but the way our trails are here, you're not supposed to ride on them when they're wet anyway, so that's not a factor for me. And then finally, geometry on this, 69 degree head angle, plenty of other specs to look over, but uh, that head angle is, you know, again, it's a little bit more towards the cross country side, but still usable, especially for a 29er. And with this felt, uh, similar to the Giant, this is another one of those bikes that you can just go to a local bike shop and pick up, and you'll have that convenience of them setting it up for you and then you know the usual tune-ups and things like that that a local bike shop can offer you. The final bike on this list is the NS Bikes Eccentric Light 2 and it just creeps in at the $899 price point and we'll look at the fork first the XCM so it's a coil spring you know middle range of their coil spring line uh, it does have 32 millimeter stanchions so it's going to be a little bit stronger, a little bit beefier. The drivetrain on this is pretty similar to the previous two bikes that we looked at. It's a 1x10. It has 11 to 42 in the rear, so you'll get back that tiny little bit of range that you lost in the previous bike. Uh, the rear derailleur is Shimano Dior. It is not the Shadow Plus, uh, so it doesn't have a clutch, and that means that the chain's going to probably flop around a little bit more. And we're looking at Shimano hydraulic brakes again. 160 in the rear, 180 in the front. So we're seeing a pattern with those. This bike is another one that comes with these WTB Trail Boss 2.4s. And the specs actually list these as Trail Boss 2 2.4. So maybe WTB has done some changes to the compound or changes to the tread pattern or something like that. Uh, can't say that for sure, but uh, again, 2.4 inch wide, so they're a little bit wider, should be grippier in general. So in terms of the geometry, this is the 2019 model, and they don't list full specs. When I did my research, I was actually looking at 2018, uh, and that one had a 66.5 degree head angle. Um, so that is the slackest of the ones we've looked at. It's going to help you out with descending, you know, especially between that head angle and the big 29 inch tires. Uh, you're going to feel like you can kind of roll over just about anything. So there you have 9 29ers up to $900. Um, I think looking at these specs and the components and all that type of stuff can really shed some light on why one bike may be $500 and another bike could be, you know, nearly double that at $900. Please do give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you think I missed out on a bike, uh, go ahead and put that in the comments. And if you're, you know, if you're actually trying to decide between 29ers and 27.5 check out some of my previous videos that are the same format that just cover 27.5 bikes and finally uh, subscribe to the channel so you can see all the new content when it comes out and I'll see you next time.